Hi there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike. Welcome back again to another edition. This time we're going to be looking at making a, a portable antenna for four, yes, four meters. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if it's your first occasion on stumbling across my channel, then think about clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell for any future videos. And if you are a returner or a long time subscriber, well, great. Thanks for joining me again. I really appreciate it. And as is now becoming customary on this channel, certainly in this shed anyway, I have to show you today's artwork. Not by me, but by my daughter. And today's artwork is a little bit different. It's a combination of a cow and a pig. And it's called, I think it's called a coig. Oh, I've got that right. I'll be in trouble if I haven't. So uh, I have to show that. So it's a coig. There you go. Right. So the four meter band, 70 megahertz. That's what we're looking at today. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you might recall, and I'll put a link up there. Uh, I made uh, an antenna for uh, the two meter band, a portable antenna, which was made entirely out of RG58 coax. Like a single run of it uh, with a choke wound uh, at the bottom of the antenna and then the same coax used as the feeder and that was known as the flower pot antenna or the n-fed coaxial dipole n-fed coaxial dipole half wave because it's a half wave and uh, the same design is what we're going to use today but this time for the four meter band uh, the four meter band is a growing band internationally uh, we've got it here in the UK, of course, and uh, lots of countries in Europe now have four meters. Uh, not everyone has it, but it's one of those bands that's really beginning to pick up in popularity. I've never been on uh, 70 megahertz before, which is where the four meter band resides, and uh, I thought I'd give it a go. So using the same technique and the same design, uh, I made an antenna for four meters. So let me show you what I did. So just like the two meter version I made a couple of weeks ago, this is a highly portable antenna. Okay, and uh, the same design. So let me show you. Um, I'll talk about the loop in a minute. But uh, as you can see, this is RG58 coax with the uh, outer jacket and the inner braid stripped away. And uh, with that sort of extended to the full without the loop, I've uh, stripped away 99 centimeters this time, 99 centimeters. And then you have the completely intact coax all the way to, so from here, all the way to the choke and that intact length is 91 centimeters so 99 for the strip back version the top version 91 for the intact bottom version okay um, 99 is probably going to be a bit long and it proved to be the case so I just folded it back a little bit for tuning and just attached it with some nice insulation tape so uh, there you go and that's quite sturdy you can hook that on a tree or something as well that's very easy to, to, to deploy, so that's nice to use. So the hint and tip of these antennas is actually make them a tad longer, which allows you to tune them, but also to give you a bit of a fold back as well. And you can, you, to make it permanent, you can heat shrink this. Maybe even epoxy a bit as well if you wanted to, but to, obviously with epoxy you can't, <laughs> it's not easy to retune it. So uh, for me, tape is good enough and it's easy to, to sort out if anything goes wrong. Just take a nice reel of tape with you and uh, there you go. So that's uh, the way the antenna is uh, is set up. Now what I'm going to do is show you in a couple of pictures and a bit of an explanation in a minute how to make the choke, all right? Now the choke itself, this is, as you can tell, probably if you've watched the two meter video, if you have, uh, if you end up watching it, um, the diameter of the, uh, the PVC pipe I've used is a bit wider. Now on the two meter version, it was 25 mil, 25 millimeter. This is 50 millimeters, so a double the uh, diameter. I've cut about a 10 centimeter strip of pipe, <coughs> excuse me, and then drilled two holes around. Where are they? Uh, let me get my, I've forgotten why they are. Let me have a quick look for you. Yeah, about six centimeters apart. All right, and these are they're five mil holes, about 60 centimeters apart. Okay, and then how many turns? So, what I've done is uh, for the complete turns, I've done about eight complete turns. I think it is. So, you've got the first. This is where, where are we? Get myself in order here. So this is where the antenna leaves. And you can see I made a little mark with a piece of tape because I measured down to 91 centimeters. And, I've, and what you then do to, to make the choke is you feed the coax up. So the end of the antenna, the main antenna itself is out of the way. And then you're left with coax, the remainder bit of the coax, you wind it round, okay? 
And by the way, for this, I made about, I used about 10 meters of coax. So there's enough then for a good run of feed as well. So, wind it round. And how many complete turns? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, between the sort of first hole and the second hole, you should have eight complete turns of RG58. And then with the final one going round and coming out again of the hole at the bottom, and that's where your feeder goes to, and that's where you put your PL259 or whatever on the end of that run of coax. Simple stuff. So what I'll do, I'll show you a few pictures and how I made the, the, the choke now, and you can, uh, you can have a look at that, okay? So let's have a look. So here we have the, uh, the pipe ready for the choke to be wound around. And before I wind the coax on, or through and end on, I uh, put the cable ties adjacent to the two holes. And just to do that, I make sure I, I attach them down with some uh, insulation tape. And of course, once I bind the coax on top as the choke, I just attach the cable ties to keep it nice and tight. There's the coax being fed in, ready to be wound. Uh, here's the help I'm getting from the station cat, Alvin. Very helpful indeed, Alvin. Thank you very much, as per usual. And here's the finished version, the choke. Round around, you can see how many turns there, eight complete turns. So then, the antenna itself. Um, you're looking at uh, basically RG58, of course. I used a 10 meter run of RG58, which incorporates the choke windings, and also, of course, the radiating element, as well as the feed line below the choke. And now, with a six meter feed, from the choke down to the, uh, down to the radio, six meter long feed, uh, you're looking at a loss of around 0.7 dB, I think on 70 megs, which is um, entirely acceptable, I think. Uh, yes, of course, you could uh, use a stubby uh, thing at the bottom of the choke and have some really thick coax going down, like RG213 or LMR400 or Hyperflex 10, whatever you want to use. Problem with that is it's a lot more weight, so it's, it's a bit harder to deploy and to carry somewhere. If you've got it on a fiberglass pole, the pole might collapse a bit easier, and it's just a compromise. And we're talking, you know, half a dB. So yeah, okay, half a dB is half a dB. You can make the difference in a really uh, marginal contact, but uh, overall there's a compromise involved. It's not a Yagi, but of course it'll work really well, I think. So that's really good. In terms of the cost, the 10 meter run of RG58 is about five pounds. The pipe, I'm only using 10 centimeters of a two meter pipe, but costs seven pounds. So that works out to 35p. The PL259 they use isn't, a, isn't the most expensive one. It's about a pound. Okay, and um, if you wanted to throw in some heat shrink to really water weatherproof some of the joins there, uh, the section between the outer uh, di no, the um, the inner dielectric and the outer the outer outer di uh, coax there, you can weatherproof that with a bit of heat shrink or insulation tape, and you can do the same with the choke as well. But let's call it overall uh, to make the antenna. It'll cost you about seven pounds, about ten dollars. Now to buy these ready made, and I'm sure they work really well. Uh, it'll cost about £35. So the cost is about um, a fifth, 20% of the cost it would be if you wanted to buy one ready-made. I'm sure that the, the ready-made ones work well. Um, it's the same antenna, effectively. Okay, so uh, there you go. Um, right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to look at deployment, how I tested it here. Uh, make sure we've got a good SWR reading on it and that we made a couple of contacts, hopefully and uh, we'll review at the end how well the antenna did. So let's have a look at that and uh, see how well she did. So here's the antenna being deployed for testing on a fiberglass pole. The very top of the antenna is six meters off the ground, so not very high. SWR, 70 megahertz exactly, 1.3 to one. At 70.250 mid-band, 1.3 to one. Guess what, 70.5. 1.3 to 1. Tango Mike, G4WTV. Yeah, okay, uh, Tim. Well, uh, welcome to 4 metres. There's, um, oh, crikey, not not that active, but there are some 40 stations over here um, uh, to uh, to your age. Um, and uh, there's quite a few uh, always active. Uh, if I'm in the shack, I'm always listening to uh, 70.45. And um, yeah, so uh, somebody else on the uh, on the band on four meters. That's good stuff. But um, yeah, I'm getting you about uh, about. I should. Uh, the trouble is my uh, my F meter's a bit optimistic. <laughs> um, and 
term. Uh, yeah, judging by your signal strength, I'm getting you about, I don't know, 5 2, 5 3, something like that. But so there you go. Uh, deployed, tuned, and contacts made. Really pleased with the situation around here. I live on the, uh, so I'm making a bit of clattering noise with the antenna, sorry. Really pleased with the situation down here on the south coast of England. Uh, one of the guys who I managed to speak to, apart from apart from Roy there, uh, he um, he had, oh, he sent me a spreadsheet of the local operators who are active on uh, four metres. It's over 40 on the list, and they're all within a 15, 20 mile radius. So if I can get any height with this antenna, it could have quite a bit of fun. Uh, some active nets going on, both in the... Uh, to the east of me and to the west of me so brilliant four meters i mean you know it's it's surprising how busy it is in some parts of the uh, parts of the country um and actually you know there's a bit of a blueprint there isn't there about how to maybe spark some more interest in vhf and uhf in your area might need one or two of you to coordinate it but get ops involved put stuff on social put some stuff out on social media collate a database of people get a net going and you'd be surprised then how how active a band is. You know, once people realise that people are on a frequency and they will be monitoring it and, you know, will be involved in, in stuff like nets or, you know, general usage, and people will flock to that frequency. And it's obviously a very good case study in point here, isn't there? So that's brilliant. Um, so there we go. Now the next step for this antenna is to test it portable. Now, the only problem is I, I've only got four metres on my 7300 and I don't really fancy taking that in the car. So uh, I may look into getting a real cheapy little... Uh, any tone, something like that, on just for four meters, um, and that's probably going to be my next thing to do. So I'll hopefully have a test on this, probably on one of the local nets, um, on high ground, my usual spot where I've used two meters really successfully, uh, and I'll deploy this in the same way on the roach pole, and see if I can make some contacts on four meters. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for stopping by. If you really liked it, then click think about clicking subscribe and the notification bell. But overall, thanks for sticking with me and uh, have a great day. This is Tim G5TM wishing you 7.3 and good luck with your antenna building too. Bye bye.